table in there earlier. Well, they're both around here somewhere. Okay. Well, hopefully with it. We'll go ahead and call the uh, Lancaster County Board of Commissioners meeting to order for Tuesday, July 15th. And will you please join me in the salute to our flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm Larry Hetkins, currently serving as chair of the Lancaster County Board of Commissioners and uh, assisting this morning my fellow county commissioners, Brent Smoyer, vice chair, Roma Amundsen, commissioner. I think we'll be joined by Deb Shore, who's on a phone call at this time. Brittany Barron serves as our deputy county attorney, Angela Zoko, recording secretary, and Mr. Dan Noldy, our county clerk, will begin the meeting, the agenda. A copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is located on the wall at the hearing room. Additionally, a copy of all written material to be discussed at today's open meeting is available from the county clerk staff. The material can also be viewed on the county's website at lancaster.ne.gov. Uh, first item on the agenda are minutes. Approval of the minutes of the Board of Commissioners meeting held on Tuesday, July 8th, 2014. Move approval. Second. Are there additions or corrections? If not, call the roll, please. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Hutkins? Yes. Motion carries three to zero. Next are claims or approval of all claims processed through Tuesday, July 15th, 2014. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Hutkins? Yes. Motion carries three to zero. Next is number four, public hearings. First one is county change zone number 14015 from AG Agricultural District to I Industrial District on property generally located at South 148th Street and Hooper Road. Welcome, sir. Do you solemnly swear from the testing we're out to give us the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. We're opening the public hearing on county change of zone 14015. Good morning, Sarah Hartzell from the Planning Department. Um, we have a change of zone today on 148th and Hooper Road, which is commonly referred to as the Bennett Corner. Um, I'll show you a little exhibit here of the location. The village of Bennett is um, directly south of here off of a 158th, which is actually over in that alignment there. This is the alignment with the um, relatively new in interchange that we have at that corner there, and they realigned the road to get onto, over to 148th. So the parcel is actually a larger lot, and the request is only on this part that's on the south side of Hooper Road. Um, the request is to move from agriculture to industrial zoning. Uh, you'll recall in 2011, there was a comprehensive plan amendment to change the land use in this area from what had previously been showed as shown as agricultural land use to a combination of industrial and um, commercial land uses. This right here is a, actually a commercial use already and the, the area about five acres is zoned commercial at that spot. It's a convenience store at that interchange. Um, the, this change brought in about 15 to 20 acres in that neighborhood on each one of those four corners for commercial and then this larger area between 148th or sorry yeah 148th 156th Hooper Road and Highway 2 shown as a, a spot where possibly a, a future large employer could come in um, if they they had a, a use that was more appropriate to be sited away from the city and um, didn't have a real high requirement for um, utilities. They'd have to have private wastewater and the um, rural water is available at that point, but not in a large enough supply for some, some industrial uses. So that was, the, that was the concept with this comprehensive plan amendment. Um, this request then would be the first piece of land to come in in this area for an actual request for change in zone. 
So what we're, what we're looking at is um, an industrial district in the county zoning resolution that doesn't have a whole lot of variation. We don't have a whole lot of variation in our zoning resolution. We have one commercial district. We have one industrial district. The way that we've um, kind of controlled the uses that you can have in an industrial district is to require special permits for certain uses that you might consider higher, you know, uh, maybe they produce more noxious fumes, more noise, more vibration, all of those impacts that you might have on, on adjacent properties. The comprehensive plan talks a little bit about industrial centers. So if you can picture this place as actually being a combination of ownerships, because all of those parcels are in separate ownerships, um, and them developing together so that they coordinate, they have an internal roadway, they can get from one business to another easily, customers can get from one business to another easily. Um, the comprehensive plan talks about basically two kinds of industrial centers. One is a light industrial center, and that would have a lot of office and retail and light manufacturing and maybe contractor yards and things like that. Um, the other is a heavy, heavy to moderate industrial center, and that would have more of those heavy uses, those high um, impact uses. So what we're suggesting is that the industrial zoning, the special permitted uses, are akin to those heavy to moderate uses, where the um, light industrial uses are more akin to the allowed industrial uses in the, in the county zoning. So our first, our first recommendation is that, and we've, we've um, talked to the applicant about this as well, is that we probably would not recommend approval of any of those special uses along the area on Hooper Road and 148th Street where they're likely to be adjacent to possible future residential development, you know, and, and they could actually have an impact. And there is some residential development, if you'll recall, Across um, the road. Oh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's already zoned AGR, this yellow area over here. And so we already have some residential. I, mean, I think we actually had a testimony from one person who has purchased land and has not yet built and concerned about that. And, and um, he's had contact with the applicant now. So that, that would be our first recommendation. The other pieces that we're um, wanting to make sure happen are those internal circulation. So we've, we've requested and received signature from the applicant on a zoning agreement that he will um, provide us with a preliminary plat showing a basic layout of how his internal road could connect to the adjacent parcels and everyone could share access points so that they can get from one piece to another and then we can reduce the, the accesses, especially onto Hooper, which is a very high traveled road. Um, as well as signs and, um, what's the other piece? I think sign, signs were the other major piece. So we've got, we've got a roadway that lots of people travel, lots of folks go from Highway 2 up towards Waverly or towards the north side of Lincoln or the east side of Lincoln. So lots and lots of traveling public. We want this to be a welcoming, you know, a friendly kind of entrance. So the zoning agreement also required that there be no billboard type signs that we call those off-site signs and that each business be, be required or re, limited to a single sign of 100 square feet. Yeah. So that kind of, it, it still, still provides every sign or every business a, the possibility of having a pole sign out by the road so that they can get their advertising and be visible, but um, does restrict that somewhat. Our sign code has virtually no, no real restrictions for the industrial district. Commissioner Shore. A, a question comment. If, if I remember right, and it drops off pretty steeply, too. This is so kind of the, the high, level. if you looked at the whole area, this is kind of the higher point, mm -hmm. and then it kind of slopes down. You saw that little blue dot down there is a little mm -hmm. pond that sits way down low, and it is quite a slope. You're right. And, and then the, because we've never done this before, is this kind of a format? Should we see other situations crop up in other places, not crop up, but develop or grow in other parts of the county that we can use this format? Yeah, I, I think the zoning agreement is something that we could apply in, in the entire county. And, and we'll definitely, if, if others come in, other if the zoners in this particular area, we'll be making sure that they also come in with a preliminary plat and that those plats mesh together. Um, the, the preference would be that this applicant, and I think they're willing to and, and trying to talk to the other owners at this time, that they all come in at once and say, hey, hey, this is how we think it's going to lay out. Maybe the others don't do anything for 10 years, you know, but at least they, they would have some kind of an idea of what, they, what their possibilities are. 
and you're able to work out the entrances, primary entrances will be off of 148? We, we will be working out the detail of exactly where those entrances are during the preliminary plat process, but um, yeah, and it, and it may be that the 148th Street ent entrance is actually on the south property, you know, south of this person's property, if, if that's the best spot for it, or if it, it ends up on his property, then, you know, that's where the access will be for, for both properties. But he'll, if it's on his property, he'll agree to give access to the southern property so that they can share that entrance. Okay. Sounds like you've given a lot of good thought. Are there any uh, other questions for planning department? Um, we did have uh, some contact with the Bennett Village, or sorry, the Bennett Planning Commission, and um, they were not so much concerned with the actual change of zone because they've known this is coming through. They, I mean, they were involved in the comp plan amendment. Um, just, just a little bit of concern about not the uncertainty of what those uses might be. And with a change of zone, I mean, it, it does, it opens up a range of uses, but it's not like a special permit where we know exactly what that use is going to be on that property. But this is out of their zoning regulation, but we appreciate their interest. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. we always send everything within two miles of, of a zoning jurisdiction. We always send to that town and ask them for comments. Good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are there others which uh, would uh, offer information? Uh, those uh, in favor of it will probably take first. Well, we, we go either. The other gentleman was up and coming up already, so. <clears throat> do you so much swear from the testimony you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Good morning. My name is Lyle Loth. I'm with ESP Engineers uh, uh, on behalf of Roland Meyer, the, uh, the owner of this property. Sarah did an excellent job of presenting this. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to add other than uh, we are willing to, uh, in fact, uh, Mr. Meyer has signed the conditional zoning agreement. We are fully intending to contact the adjoining property owners to see if they have you know, a willingness or an interest in working out a preliminary plat with us. Uh, and as far as the accesses, yes, we have been in communication with the county engineering department and I'm comfortable that we can reach a satisfactory uh, conclusion to that so would attempt to answer any questions you might have any questions <coughs> for mr long yeah. yes yeah. commissioner yeah. Edmondson. What exactly is the nature of the business that's in those buildings the the buildings that are there right now there's a lawn service a seed dealer uh, one of the buildings is being used for rv storage and there's a small welding shop small what small welding shop Okay. Okay. And the seed and the welding shop are directly related to agricultural services in that area. And as I visit with those residents in that area, they appreciate those very much. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are there others which uh, would wish to uh, testify in favor of the proposed change of zone? Are there those that wish to, um, to offer testimony in opposition? Okay. <laughs> Are there those that would wish to offer information in a neutral position? Do you sound like swear from that the testimony you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Uh, my name is Ron Moss, and I'm the chairman of the Bennett Planning Commission. I'm here this morning basically to to express the appreciation from the Planning Commission and from the Village of Bennett to the County Planning Commission and Board of Commissioners for keeping us apprised and informed of what's going on here because we understand and we recognize it's outside of our normal jurisdiction, but we are interested in what's happening. So I just wanted to come here and express appreciation and thanks for, for uh, keeping us up to date. Uh, <clears throat> we, in our as uh, Sarah mentioned, we did, as the Planning Commission, express some concerns about what the potential use for this area was going to be, and that was our own, only really anything we expressed on, in regard to this. And we are concerned that uh, you know, we were asking for a delay by the Planning Commission until we got more information. Well, that didn't work. The Planning Commission went ahead and made their recommendation. Now you guys are looking at it, so. We really are not opposed to anything that's been proposed so far. 
and there's information that's come forward since we made that recommend or that decision is providing additional information. <clears throat> the one thing that has come up that has not been addressed yet that to my knowledge is at some point in time, I don't know whether it's now or later or what, but it's going to have to be a consideration for fire protection for that area. Because if we get the development there that potentially could be there, there's going to be a, quite a concentration of buildings, <coughs> businesses, et cetera, and so forth. So I don't, that area is actually under the uh, area that the Bennett Fire Department is responsible for. And I asked some of them if, if they had any thoughts or recommendations or opinions, on, and they said, well, they don't do anything until there's, they know for sure what's going to happen. So until they know what's coming in there, they're not, they don't have any recommendations or any suggestions or anything of that nature. Although they did point out that in some other instances within their area of responsibility, there have been situations where questions similar to this came up and to solve it the or I mean to reach an accommodation the fire department or the insurance company involved or somebody has required or recommended that water tanks be installed to provide uh, fire protection water just in case now i don't know whether anything of that nature is going to be involved here or not that's that's something that's now, neither here nor there, but somebody at some point in time is going to have to address the concentration of, of buildings and risk that comes up with you know, fire or what have you there. So other than that, we as a planning commission have no, I'm just here acknowledging the fact that we're going to, there's going to be something done there and we are interested in what's happening. So we appreciate you keeping us informed and uh, we look forward to talking to you again if something comes up. So, Well, Ron, we appreciate you uh, coming in this morning. <coughs> we appreciate your local planning uh, uh, commission reviewing this application. And you're all members of the county, so your input is, is uh, valuable. I believe that the Bennett is not just the Bennett Fire Department, it's the Bennett the city and rural it's a combination department well, it's a fire and rescue is what it, 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 yeah. it's 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 uh, rural and yeah. and bennett so um as such as waverly now you know a number of years ago waverly had a separate one and they had a uh, the rural and they combined them and i think most of the communities now have the combined uh, uh, fire departments and one of the things that uh, i know raymond has done and uh, malcolm is instead of always just putting up a, a, an extra water tank or having a, a, a pumper to carry more water, they have siphoned down uh, hookups on area dams. And since there is a dam on this place, maybe that can be installed, but that's one of the things. They just need an emergency supply of water that they can depend on. Point well taken. It wouldn't be the easiest thing to get to, but there is a, a body of water there within a quarter of a mile, yeah. Right, so it might be an option. Thank you. Thank you. Are there others which would wish to uh, speak to this issue, either for, against, or in a neutral position? Again, anyone that wish to uh, address the public hearing for county change of zone 14015? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and ask <coughs> the clerk to read uh, items 5A and 5B. Under new business, the resolution in the matter of county change of zone number 14015 requesting a change of zone from AG Agricultural to I Industrial and Properly Generally Located at South 148th Street and Hooper Road in Lancaster County, Nebraska. Okay. Is there a motion? Approved. Second. Then moved and seconded. Further discussion? Call the roll, please. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. <clears throat> Motion carries four to zero. Five uh, B is conditional zoning agreement in connection with county change of zone number one four zero one five. Move approval. Second. And moved and seconded. Additional discussion. <coughs> Call the roll, please. Smoyer. Yes. Shore. Yes. Amundsen. Yes. Hudkins. 
<coughs> yes. Motion carries four to zero. Under public hearings, 4B is a manager application for Thomas Trainer in connection with a Class CK liquor license for Sesostros Temple at 1050 Sotillo Road in Roca. Okay, we'll open the public hearing on the manager application. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of that, if they please come forward and we'll swear you in. Opposed? Or in a neutral position? Again, uh, anyone uh, wishing to speak at the open public hearing for the manager application for Thomas Trainer, an application with the Class C liquor license for Sesostris Temple? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing and ask the clerk to read item 5C. A resolution in the matter of a manager application for Thomas Trainer in connection with a CK liquor license for Sassasters Temple at 1050 Sotillo Road, Roca, Lancaster County, Nebraska. Move for approval. Second. Discussion? Call the roll. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Um, continuing. With new business, 5D is an amuse amusement license renewal application from Raymond United Methodist Church to operate a swap meet at 11505 North 14th Street in Raymond on August 23rd, 2014. Move approval. Second. And this is something they've done for a number of years. <coughs> they've usually followed the recommendations of the county sheriff for parking. Call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. E is authorization for the county engineer to sign the 2014 federal funds purchase program certification. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. <laughs> Five if F is a petition to vacate public way with a release and waiver of rights entitled to quick and quick claim deed to City of Lincoln regarding West Prospector Court from the West right away of South First Street West 1,615.59 feet. Move approval. Second. Discussion. Call the roll. Smoyer. Yes. Shore. Yes. Amundsen. Yes. Hudkins. Yes. <clears throat> Motion carries four to zero. G is a partial release of easement within the preserve at Cross Creek 3rd edition and a preserve at Cross Creek 5th edition as shown in exhibits A and B. Move approval. Second. Discussion. Call the roll. Shore. Yes. Amundsen. Yes. Smoyer. Yes. Hudkins. Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. H is a recommendation from the Juvenile Justice Prevention Fund Advisory Committee for the award of grants from the Juvenile Justice Prevention Fund totaling 110,000 for the 2014 to 2015 budget year. Move approval. Second. I volunteer members of that committee who spent uh, several hours reading and several hours discussing and making these recommendations. And uh, we appreciate you keeping close track of those for us. Any further discussion? Call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? <coughs> yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. 5I is a 2012 sub recipient agreement for the 2012 State Homeland Security Program from the Nebraska Emergency Management Agency. Term of the agreement is September 1st, 2012 to August 31st, 2014. Mark. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. um, uh, fortunately, as a fiscal agent for the Southeast region, the Southeast region is wanting to return the money to the state of Nebraska to the tune of $8,625. Hmm. Um, they did the end of the contract is coming up. They are not able to spend it within the contracted grant year, so they can return it back to the state, and the state has a uh, program that they're going to use it for throughout the state of Nebraska. All right. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. 
Hudkins. Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Thank you. Thanks. 5J is an interlocal agreement between the city of Lincoln on behalf of the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department and Lancaster County on behalf of the Lancaster County Corrections Community Service Program to conduct roadside litter pickup along county roads by inmates. The city will pay the county based on 50 cents per mile for roadside litter pickup, not to exceed $2,400 for the period of July 1st, 2014 to December 31st, 2014. Depending on available funding, the parties may agree in writing to increase the total amount paid to the sum of $3,500. All funding shall come from the Litter Reduction and Recycling Fund 2014 cleanup grant. Move approval. Second. Roll. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. <clears throat> K is a contract between ImageScapes Inc., Lancaster County, the City of Lincoln, and the Lincoln Lancaster County Public Building Commission for the end requirements of sod and sod replacement and installation. Term of the contract is one year from the date of execution with the option to renew for three additional one year terms. Move approval. Second. Discussion? <clears throat> Call the roll. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. L is a contract with Canwood USA Corporation for the annual supply of public, public safety and communications equipment. Term of the contract is from the date of execution and until October 29, 2014. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. 5M is an interlocal agreement with Educational Service Unit number 18 for educational services to youth detained at the Youth Services Center. The county will re reimburse the ESU up to $925,640 for the services provided. Term of the agreement is August 1st, 2014 to July 31st, 2015. Move approval. Second. Discussion? All the roll? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. 5N is an agreement with Cedars Youth Services for tracker services for adolescents placed in the Lancaster County Juvenile Drug Corp. The county will pay up to $25,000 for the services. Term of the agreement is July 1st, 2014 to June 30th, 2015. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Call the roll. Moyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. O is an agreement with the Administrative Office of the Nebraska Supreme Court for administration of the Adult Drug Court for the District Court of Lancaster County. The administrative office of the courts will pay the county $246,830 for the services. Term of the agreement is July 1st, 2014 to June 30th, 2015. Move approval. Second. And this is one time where a partnership of the state is financially beneficial for both of us. <laughs> and that's a good feeling. Any further discussion? Not. Call the roll. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. P is a grant contract for the Nebraska Crime Commission in the amount of $176,156 for the coordinated response to reducing violence against women in Lancaster County. The county will provide an in kind match of $56,791, and the Lincoln Police Department and Family Violence Council will provide $14,961 for a total project cost of $247,908. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Mm -hmm. Yes. Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. 5Q is a settlement agreement and release of claims with Mark Kennedy as personal representative of the state of Jonathan Kennedy. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. 
R is setting the annual salary of Gwen Thorpe, Deputy Chief Administrative Officer of the Lancaster County Board of Commissioners in the amount of $90,196, effective July 10th, 2014. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Gwen, we'd like to uh, thank you for all the extra work that you've uh, taken on with community mental health this year, as well as the uh, excellent work that you do with Trim. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. 5S is a political subdivision tort claim filed against Lancaster County Corrections by Henry Ants Co. for lost property in amount of $30. Based on the recommendation of Director of Corrections, I move we deny. Second. Call the roll. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. T is a political subdivision tort claim filed against Lancaster County Corrections by Lawrence Harris for lost property and amount of $35. Based on the recommendation of the Director of Corrections, I move we deny. Second. Discussion? Call the roll. Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. U is a political subdivision tort claim filed against Lancaster County Corrections by Andrew Litka for lost property in an undisclosed amount. Based on the recommendation of the Director of Corrections, I move we deny. Second. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. V is a political subdivision tort claim filed against Lancaster County Corrections by Michael Roach for lost property in amount of $1,000. Based on the recommendation of the Director of Corrections, I move we deny. Second. Discussion? Call the roll. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. W is a political subdivision tort claim filed against Lancaster County Corrections by Catherine Spencer for lost property in amount of $50. Based on the recommendation of the Director of Corrections, I move it deny. Second. Discussion? Call the roll. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Next is number six, which is consent items received in place on file the June 20. 14 report by, for county records and information management. Setting of a public hearing on Tuesday, July 22nd, 2014 at 10.30 a.m. in room 112 of the County City Building regarding an application for an addition to a Class uh, 1B liquor license for Merle's Food and Drink at 8250 West Oak Street. Move approval of the consent items. Second. Call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Next is number seven, public comment. Those wishing to speak on items relating to county business, not on the agenda, may do so at this time. I see we have uh, a member of the audience coming forth. Would you state your name for the record, please? Jane Kinsey, spokesperson, spokesperson for the Watchdogs of Lincoln Government. Welcome, Jane. On June the 27th, I sent an email to uh, the commissioners about, uh, and also to some of the media. The statement was, the watchdogs of Lincoln government has learned that the new Lancaster County Jail has escalating costs due to new construction problems. The ground under and around the 289,000 square foot building and 65 million structure is sinking or settling, preventing the use of significant portions of the facilities. Some of the doors cannot be opened or closed, causing part of the facility to be usable. This came to us as firsthand knowledge, uh, but anonymous, and also uh, secondhand knowledge by others. So uh, we would like to know why the public hasn't been um, apprised of this. And also we would like to know the estimated and already expended costs funded by taxpayers. Okay, Mr. Egan, do you have uh, knowledge of the subjects which were brought forth? <clears throat> 
That email was immediately uh, forwarded to Mike Thurber. Uh, he had absolutely no knowledge of any of these problems. I did ask him to investigate further and get back to the board. I think he's had some discussion with board members, but we can find absolutely no evidence to substantiate uh, these anonymous complaints. Uh, Ms. Kinsey, would you like to divulge your source of information <clears throat> so that we could uh, further investigate it? I did no, speak with like Corrections uh, Director uh, Mr. Thurber on uh, Friday, and I asked him if, uh, if he had any knowledge of this, and uh, he said he didn't. So, uh, again, we'd sure like to investigate it because if somebody knows something that is deteriorating out there, we certainly ha need to have it brought to our attention so that we can uh, I, get with the architects and find out about and it. I, and I think Mike has made it very clear there is no settling occurring. Uh, we are at, I think, 670 uh, inmates today. Nearly all pods are being used. So I would just have the would like the opportunity to disprove every one of these claims, which are factually untrue. Sure. Okay. Um, well, all I can say is that it came from a structural engineer who's involved in the project. Um, well, if you would uh, feel more comfortable of leaving that name with Mr. Egan in private, we very much appreciate it because. Anybody can make claims, but we need to get to the bottom of it if it is. Now, as far as some doors opening and non-opening, uh, prior to our taking possession of the building, uh, there are air-operated doors, and I won't go any further about it because it is a security thing, and the company responsible for that had to come out and make adjustments uh, with the pressures and whatnot so that they did operate correctly, but I personally, and I think the board members, that's all that we're aware of that uh, that was a problem with those doors. That was at no cost to us. And that was no cost to us. A contractor had to make that make those work. But if there were some references to doors <clears throat> not closing, that's the only thing that, uh, that we're aware of. You mean doors, um, you had problems before the inmates were put there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was corrected? Mm -hmm. Yes and it was paid for by the contractor? Right. Okay. Because it was under the warranty period. Okay. Um, well, if this, there is a rumor going around. Well, r rumors are fine and anybody can start a rumor, but we need to deal in facts. And, and if, if you've, you know, obviously this person is a professional and if they have professional opinion, uh, if you'd want to share that name with Mr. Egan, we'll be happy to, to visit about them in a very civil manner, and if there's something wrong out there, and we need to know about it. Okay, uh, I'm, I appreciate your addressing the issue publicly and saying that this is a rumor, um, and letting the public know that if they hear of this, that uh, they need to discount it, and that the county commissioners at the meeting on July the 15th, 2014, have said that they find no fact in this rumor. And additionally, I'd like to also state that we have a, <clears throat> currently we have had monthly meetings before we do payouts on anything that's connected with the new facility. And <clears throat> the mayor, a city council member, and two county commissioners sit on what's called the JPA, Joint Public Agency. And we review with um, uh, the corrections director and also our budget director, any payments that are made in that regard. And that has been on, ongoing on a monthly basis as we uh, assume the full ownership and operation of the jail. Okay. In the future, I would also ask that you respond to email if I sent you. I didn't get a response from any of the commissioners so that uh, this matter can be, or any matter can be uh, discussed before your meeting. Well, it was kind of impossible for us to respond when we weren't aware of the problem, but we were doing the research to find out, and that's the reason we uh, contacted the corrections director, and I personally had a conversation with him Friday. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't answer email? I don't. Uh, I personally don't, and uh, the uh, but you're always welcome, as I tell anybody in the county. I take personal phone calls uh, from 6.30 in the morning till 10.30 at night at uh, my home residence, and that's the number that's fun because 
on anything like this, it's always better to have a two-way personal communication so that we can get to the bottom of it quicker. So I prefer personal uh, uh, conversations. The other commissioners may choose to communicate in a different fashion. Well, we do have a system in place where uh, every email is answered uh, that and comes recorded. in under commission. And if this one was an oversight, I apologize for you not receiving a response. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there others which wish to make public comment? If not, uh, would you proceed with announcements, Mr. Clark? The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold a special staff meeting on Tuesday, July 15, 2014 at 9.30 a.m. in the Bill Oxford Studio of the County City Building. In addition, the regular staff meeting will be held on Thursday, July 17, 2014 at 8.30 a.m. in the Bill Oxford Studio of the County City Building. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will tour the Lancaster County Adult Reporting Center on Tuesday, July 15, 2014 at 4.30 p.m. at Traybert Hall. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold their next regular meeting on Tuesday, July 22, 2014 at 10.30 a.m. in Room 112 of the County City Building with the Board of Equalization immediately following. County commissioners can be reached at 402-441-7447 or commish at lancaster.ne.gov. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners meeting is broadcast live. It is rebroadcast on Tuesday and Saturday on Five City TV, cable channel 5. In addition, the meeting may be viewed on the internet at lancaster.ne.gov under Five City TV video on demand or Five City TV on YouTube. Second. Call the roll, please. Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries 5 to 0. We'll adjourn the regular meeting of the Lancaster County Board and open the Lancaster County Board of Equalization meeting for Tuesday, July 15th. Mr. Clark? Uh, a copy of the Nebraska Opening Me Meetings Act is located on the wall at the rear of the hearing room. Additionally, a copy of all written material to be discussed at today's open meeting is available from the county clerk staff. The material can also be viewed on the county's website at lancaster.ne.gov. Also in attendance this morning uh, from the county assessor's office is Scott Gaines. Agenda item one are minutes. Approve the minutes of the Board of Equalization meeting held on Tuesday, July 8, 2014. Move approval. Second. Are there additions or corrections? If not, call the roll. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? <clears throat> yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Number two are additions and deductions to the tax assessment rolls. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? <coughs> Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Number three is motor vehicle tax exemption applications for American Legion, Department of Nebraska, Angelic Temple Church of God in Christ, Cedars Youth Services, East Ridge Presbyterian Church, Epona Horse Rescue. Move approval of the motor vehicle tax exemption application. Second. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Amundsen? Yes. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. Hudkins? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Number four is notice of assessed valuation change for property taxation purposes for Daniel and Lurie Olson. Good morning, Scott Gaines, Deputy Assessor, Registered Deeds. This is a property uh, home that was built uh, without a building permit. I believe it's in that uh, no permit zone uh, within the county. Uh, one of our appraisers discovered it out uh, during field work. So this is to put this property on the tax roll, notify the taxpayer of our uh, value and allow a 30 day protest process for that value. Okay. Move approval of the notice. Second. Does anybody else wish to speak to this item? No. Okay. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Smoyer? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Hudkins? <coughs> yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. Mr. Chair, move to adjourn. Second. Second. Call the roll. Yes. 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 Hudkins. Motion carries four to zero.